Hello. In this lecture, we're going to summarize everything we've learned so far and introduce you to some image processing on the most basic level using what we've learned so far. And this should be very helpful with the final project of this course. And so this will be your first look at sort of what kind of things we're going to be doing throughout this course and, and further on in the specialization. All right. So we've learned a few things so far. We're going to start by defining a two-day 2D image that represents, uh, sorry, a 2D array that represents an image. So let's do that. Image equals, I'm going to sort of open up with some new lines here. And within an image are pixels. Every, and pixels are generally represented just by integer values. And so we're going to simplify everything down and say that pic images are just 2D as arrays of uh, numbers from 0 to 10. So we got this image, looks like this. As you can see, I'm sort of painting before your eyes. Yeah, that's nice. Maybe let's add an eight. Beautiful. And another two. All right. So here's our image. And this actually, albeit very simple, it's a good representation of an image. Because if it was a three pixel image, here you would have brightness and you would be able, to be able to see something. It's a, it's a bit of a stretch, but we're going to keep calling it an image. And we're going to define a function that processes this image in a certain way. And so if you recall, func, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take these sort of darker parts, if we say that the lower numbers are sort of darker parts of the image, and just make them brighter, because darkness is, doesn't look as good. All right, so we're going to call it raise lower values of image. I'm going to pass in the image, and, if, and we have to give it its type. If you remember, the type of a 2D array is simply an array of an array of int. And if you ever are not sure what to put here, you can hold Alt and click on this, and it'll, again, it'll give you the type. And this is sort of, this is uh, shorthand. So the, uh, the square brackets like this <clears throat> are shorthand for array with the angle bracket of the type. So this looks much nicer. <clears throat> All right, and soon we're going to see something interesting about this definition that we've never seen before. Uh, but first, let's do some processing. All we're going to do is take any uh, lower value, say less than 5, and set it equal to 5. So what we're going to do, so we'll have a double for loop. And remember, you can do, uh, you, we can do a for in loop here, as in for we're going to call this a row because we're going to get a row each for it in the first iteration in image. Remember what's a row? So a row will be a single array of, of integers now. That's ex exactly what we want. And now we go through the columns in each row. And a column should now be an integer. Great. Now we get the value here. And there's a little problem. And although this is nice and it's great for reading the value, interesting thing is we can't really set the value here because we we have image but we can't we don't know which pixel we're on so we're going to do this differently i just wanted to show you this all right so we're going to have to know which exact uh coordinate we're on like zero 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 one so forth so we're going to have an i we're still going to use row but instead of in uh the image we're going to make it be an integer so we can go from zero to image.count. And so we use the range operator, as we've seen once before. And now row is directly an integer. Uh, it's similar to before, but different. As in now in this next in column, we're going to have to go, we're going to have to access the actual row of image. And we can still call dot count. Because image, once you access the row, it's a single array. And now and column is another count from zero to uh, the length, which in this case is three. So. What can we do here? Here, now we know that the, we can read the value of the pixel, which is just image row column. And if we call this right now, raise lower values of image, it should give us, it should run nine times and tell us what it printed. And we can see that again from here. And it, it, it tries to graph it to us because it is called sequentially. And you can see it's 3, 7, 10, 6, 4, 2, et cetera. We're going to hide that. All right, so this works. We want to set it to something, so we need an if statement here. 
So if this value is less than 5, we're going to simply set it to 5. And this is where we're going to get an error. And we're going to read there. And it is we cannot assign it because image is a constant. When you pass a function, when you pass a parameter into a function, you can't modify that parameter. Uh, that's what return values are for. But in cases like this where you do want to modify the parameter, you can mark it with var. And there's a nice fix it here, which makes it super easy. Let's just click on that. And all it did was add var to our parameter. Now it works. And now we raise the value of our image. We're still calling it. And it says it ran four times, which would be one, two, three, four. Four times is correct. And now if we print out image again down here. All right. So once we print out image, we see our function's not working as intended. And this is great. Well, this is not great, but uh, this lets me demonstrate something more to you. And I do know why that's the case. So when you set it as var, it's still passing in a copy of the image. So when you, because image is a structure, you get a copy of the image inside your function. Uh, and when you set it to a var, it becomes mutable. So you can change it as much as you want into function, but it's not actually changing this uh, image outside of the function that we passed in. So if you print this image here, you'll see that it has indeed been changed, but it hasn't been changed here. And so can we get what we want though? How can we actually change image? We can, and it's a different uh, sort of modifier here. So var means that to pass it in and create a variable that you can change, but there's another parameter called in out, which is what we want, which means it comes in and also goes out. That's how I see it. But what it means is that now uh, it's almost passed by reference. Now you're passing this by reference, and when you do changes to it, they will be reflected outside too. And in out is a bit special. As you can see, we get an error down here to make it clear when you're calling the function that this parameter might be changed. Uh, Swift makes you add an ampersand to it. This is a lot like passing a reference in, in, in C and in C and C++. And it's really nice. So when you do this, you know that it might be changed. And so it, there's no, and when you don't do this, you know that your variable will not be touched by this function. All right, now that we've made this change, we can see image has indeed now been modified by this function. And so yes, this is a good overview of what we learned so far. And I hope this helps you later on in your assignments. We'll see you next lecture.